Auzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnne fî halkı semâvâti vel ardi vakti lâ fil leyli vel nâhâri Lâ âyâtil lî ullil albâb Allazîne yaskarûna allâhâ Kiyâmen ve qa'udan ve alâ cenûbihim Ve yatafakkarûnâ fî halkı semâvâti vel ard Rabbana ma khalaqta hazâ bâtilâ Subhânaka fakinâ azâb al-nâr the verses that are recited are from Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verses 191 to 192. And the translation is as follows. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are indeed signs for men of understanding. Those who remember Allah while standing, sitting, and lying on their sides, and ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth, O our Lord, thou hast not created this in vain. Nay, holy art thou, Save us then from the punishment or the fire. Now these verses were actually recited in a dars only a few days ago by a respected Gamma Zafra Saab. But actually in that dars he remarked that these verses are often recited by many of us in our prayers. So I hope he, hasn't, he doesn't mind that I've chosen to recite the very same verses today. But perhaps I'm going to take a slightly different angle. But I do encourage you to listen to that dars, as I always find his dars very enjoyable and I certainly always learn so much from him. So the reason I've chosen to speak on these verses is because these days I'm reminded by the landmark address that was delivered by Hazrat Amir al-Mu'min Ayn Dalla bin Nazir al-Aziz at the Yamra conference in December 2019. And in that conference, beloved Hazur addressed Amdi researchers, calling on them to lead the efforts in restoring the Islamic Golden Age. Now in this verse, and indeed in many verses in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala has instructed us to reflect on the purpose of our creation and that we as human beings are the best of his creations because we have been bestowed with intelligence and understanding and that we can tell right from wrong and we are blessed with comprehension and that as a result we can ponder on his creation and understand it has been created for our benefit and this pursuit of knowledge is actually a means of finding and understanding God to an even higher level now it's worth spending a few moments to understand who these men of understanding are now, in Gamr Sahib's dars, he rather articulated really beautifully on some of the proofs from the Holy Quran that speak of this creation. He shared verses from the Holy Quran that talk about the Big Bang, and the expanding universe, and indeed the eventual end of the universe. He also talked about other verses that talk about how our skins will bear witness on us, referring to our fingerprints and other forensic evidence that is left behind us, and many other verses. And I'm sure we each have our own favourite verses from the Holy Quran in this respect. But beloved Hazur Agdas reminded us in his speech at the Amra conference that our duty in this relation to the pursuit of knowledge doesn't end, in, end here. Indeed, he reminded us that there was a time when the Islamic scientists and philosophers ruled the world in terms of knowledge. How the Islamic physicians, physicians were the true pioneers of modern medicine and how we still see their marks in modern medicine today. Some of you might be aware of the contributions of the likes of Ibn Musa al-Kharizmi, whose works included on the foundations of algebra, or of Ibn Badutta, who was, a, who was famous for writing about his travels for much of the world, or of Ibn al-Haytham, who was a polymath and many considered to be the father of modern scientific mythology, methodology. I'm sure we've all heard of the scientific method that is used today. But sadly, the state of the Muslim world is not the same today. In fact, Hazul quoted from a Western researcher who remarked that, for example, that there have only been two scientists from the Muslim countries who have won the Nobel Prize. And this is despite there being some 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. And that from 46 Muslim countries combined, that they contributed to just 1% of the world's scientific literature. So Hazul called on us to revive the honour and dignity of Islam and bring about another Islamic golden era. And he also told us how we should go about it. And that is, in our daily lives, we should constantly ponder over the creation of Allah Ta'ala. Now we're very fortunate that in this country, that Alhamdulillah, we have an excellent system of education, where most of us have been able to study to a very high level. 
And although many of us may not be researchers by profession, I still see in our community that most of us have very good jobs and we are constantly using our intelligence and understanding. And in addition to this, each of us, we have our own interests and hobbies that often require further understanding. But how many of us, and I include myself in this, truly approach our, approach our lives, our professional lives or our personal interests and our hobbies with this approach that Hazur has reminded us with, which is that we constantly ponder over the creation of Allah Ta'ala in our daily lives, before, during, and after we undertake our work. Now my personal example, you know, when I study nature, I, I sort of marvel at how the ant colony works and how they organize themselves. So when you consider the individual ant, ant you wouldn't consider it to be very intelligent. Indeed, it, can't, it probably can't sustain its own self. But when you study an ant colony, you marvel at how well and organized the colony is itself. You know, so ant colonies embark on massive mega infrastructure projects that build impressive nests with complex network of tunnels. They're able to seek out new sources of food for the colony, and they embark on wars and defend themselves against other colonies and other organisms. But where does this coordination come from? It's a common myth that this comes from the queen of the colony, but this is not the case. Actually, the, the role of the queen of the colony tends to be rather limited to things like just reproduction. And like I said, the individual ant on its own is rather limited and simple and can't do anything and can't achieve anything by itself. But somehow, when an ant colony comes together, hidden laws in the system manifest themselves and provide for the colony. Now, scientists refer to this as the concept of emergence. How often in complex systems, when you look at the individual units, they obey simplistic rules. But when you look at the system as a whole, the macro system, it exhibits a compl complicated, sophisticated rules that emerge from these simple units. In my line of work in the financial industry, I see a similar phenomenon manifest itself. And we've all seen from this current crisis that when we're cut off from society, we as individuals, individuals we struggle to fend for ourselves. And that's even in a limited lockdown. We've seen how much we struggle, how much of a struggle it's been. But yet, in normal times, when what in normal times what we find is that society is able to meet our needs normally what happens is much like in an ant, in an ant colony like an individual ant we choose to specialize in this particular line of work but on our own our own produce is not sufficient to meet our needs but somehow when we come together as society our output together we are able to do marvelous things we're able to feed ourselves and have luxury of food on offer we achieve ma amazing engineering feats. We build incredible gadgets. But where does this system of organization come from? Is this something we have designed ourselves? I'd say certainly not. Now the field of economics came after man stumbled in the solution, I would say. I'd say that economics is a study of how society meets its needs. But at its core, it's a study that comes something after the fact. Indeed, when society has tried to design the system for itself and tried to designate the role of the individual, it has failed miserably as we've seen in previous attempts of communism. But somehow, we find that the system inherently exists for us within our society, something that's been handed down to us from generation to generation. And, and in some ways, it's very much like an ant colony, but in very important ways it is not. Because we, as human beings, unlike ants, are able to recognize God's creation. And we can recognize the means that Allah Ta'ala has provided for us. We are taught this through the prophets. And for example, through Islam, we are taught how to conduct ourselves in our daily lives with one another. How we should adopt honesty above all else. How we should look after our neighbors and the poor and the needy and the orphans. And how we should write contracts when dealing in matters of business. And how we should abstain from charging interest and loans and many more things. But this is just my own very brief personal observation that I share with you. And Hazur has instructed and guided us, guided us from the Quran that we, each of us should strive to find our own means of understanding in our own lines of work and interest. So whether you're in school or in university, whether you're studying maths, English, science, English or whatever, whatever you're doing or whatever your line of work you might be in or whatever your interest may be, you too should ponder over the creation before, during and after you work or, st or study. And if we strive in this manner, then surely Allah Ta'ala will grant us with success. That will be the means for which Andes can become world leaders, world leaders in every field, inshallah. 
But we do not do this for worldly desires. We do so to fulfill the purpose of our creation so that we can recognize and earn nearness to Allah Ta'ala. So that we can serve our fellow mankind and establish Allah Ta'ala's kingdom in this world. Now we can all see the ills and pains of the world around us. And despite making so many progresses in society, in, in science, in engineering, in economics and so many other fields, there is something inherently missing. Despite making incredible advances and creating wonderful, wonderful things that help us in our daily lives, despite creating enormous levels of wealth, people are still unhappy. People still protest because of the injustices and inequalities in the world, and people are desperately searching for the solution. <clears throat> but we are blessed to live in the age of the promised reform, reformer and with Khilafat, and that Hazur has given us the antidote to the world's ills. But we must all strive to act upon his instructions to serve the world in this regard. Now I only shared a few uh, thoughts on this topic but I would urge you all and recommend that you all listen to Hazul's speech at the Amra conference and the other landmark addresses he delivered that year particularly at UNESCO and Berlin. I'll end with the prayer that seems fitting on the subject. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnata wa fil akhirati hasnatuna wa kana izabana our Lord, grant us good in this world as well as good in the world to come and protect us from the torment of fire. Amen. <laughs>